Hey guys, today we're going to talk about different types of faults. Now, we have types of dip-slip faults. Under normal faults, we have a dip-slip fault where the hanging wall moved down relative to the foot wall and horizontal extension vertical thinning. Now for reverse faults, also known as thrust faults, we have a dip-slip fault where the hanging wall moved up relative to the foot wall. Horizontal shortening and vertical thickening, compression. And we also have strike slip faults, or faults where the movement slip between adjacent blocks was in the strike direction. This may seem like foreign language, but once you get a couple of minutes of experience learning about these uh, types of faults, they really aren't as bad as you may think that they are. Now, basically some key terms that you really need to be familiar with in order to understand these concepts are hanging wall and foot wall. You have to basically know the difference between what a hanging wall is and what a foot wall is. Now. So the best way to explain it is to look at a picture. Okay, so hopefully you can see this image fairly well. Um, basically, here is the foot wall and here is the hanging wall. As we can see, it says the foot wall refers to the plate underneath the fault line, and this is the fault plane. The term hanging wall refers to the opposite plate. Note the drawings below. So, basically, if this is the fault plane, um, hopefully you all could uh, see the see this um, interesting. Uh, occurrence the foot wall so basically this is the fault plan and you have to be able to tell that this plate is lying underneath this fault plate it might be difficult to understand but really it's not that hard but so basically this is the fault plan and the foot wall is as you can guess like your foot is basically on the very bottom uh, or your foot is part of your body and it's basically like the lowest part of your body so kind of like similarly the foot wall is underneath the fault plane so the foot wall is below the fault plane and then the hanging wall is above the fault plane so basically you can think of it, the hanging wall is kind of above the foot wall the foot wall is below the hanging wall so once you could see that you could also see that um, one of these moved, right? Because if this, if neither the foot wall nor the hanging wall move, then this yellow kind of line would be like going straight across. But as you can see that this uh, area right here, um, it looks like it probably used to be connected right up here. And the green kind of, you know, could have been connected, this uh, orange color connected yellow. But as you can see, one of them moved down. Um, and obviously with the arrows pointing, you could tell that this one moved down. Um, but, like, so what does that even mean, and how could you tell which one moved down without arrows uh, pretty much explaining that for you? Well, basically, if you look at your definition, definitions, it says for a normal fault, a dip-slip fault, where the hanging wall moved down relative to the foot wall. So basically, it's saying that the hanging wall is moving down being as being compared to the foot wall. So the hanging wall is the one that's being, that's moving. And so a normal fault is again a dip slip fault because this the category is types of dip slip fault. So a normal fault is a type of dip slip fault where the hanging wall moved down relative to the foot wall. So as you can see, this if this yellow used to be across like connected, well this part the hanging wall, the yellow is kind of further beneath than the foot wall. So as you can see that the hanging wall obviously moved down because if it didn't move down, um, if it moved up, this yellow part, right, this thing would be above, uh, up here, 
but it has to move down because, um, as you can tell, if this whole area was connected, well, obviously this orange was would have been connected with this orange up here, but this whole the whole hanging wall moved down, so that's how you can kind of tell. And this is considered a normal fault because, as we see, our definition once again says a normal fault is a dip slip fault where the hanging wall moved down, as we could see, or as we have seen, relative to the foot wall. Now, for a normal fault. Um, you see that there is horizontal extension and vertical thinning. Um, so horizontal extension, uh, you should be able to see that, and then vertical thinning. So once again, um, so once again, as you can see, horizontal extension and vertical thinning are two terms associated with normal uh, faults. And we can see um, reverse faults are. Is a dip or uh, or a ver reverse fault is a dipset fault where the hanging wall moved up relative to the to the foot wall and also reverse faults are known as thrust faults. So that picture represented a normal fault, but as you could also see or as you could have uh, as you could guess, um, oh this picture pretty much explains. So a normal fault, you can see the hanging wall move down relative to the foot wall, and then for the reverse fault, basically the reverse or the opposite, um, the hanging wall moves up relative to the foot wall, and it's also known as a thrust fault. And horizontal shortening and vertical thickening compression are basically some terms associated with this type of fault. And then, so basically, um, those are types of dip slip faults, and now we have a type of strike slip fault, basically a fault where the movement or slip between adjacent blocks was in the strike direction. Okay. So, um, so basically, we have a strike slip fault, and so let's go ahead and type that in on Google. Here are some pictures of strike slip faults. So basically, a strike slip fault is a fault where the movement between adjacent blocks was in the strike direction. So there are basically right lateral, there are basically such thing as light, right, right lateral strike slip faults and left lateral strike slip faults. So Basically, what is the difference? Well, as you can see from a right lateral strikes default, um, basically pick a point where you would like pick any point. So, like right here, if you're standing right here, um, if this is considered a right lateral uh, strikes default because because um, if you're standing right here, you can see that the other plate is has moved to the right. Right, because otherwise it would be like connected. But if you're standing right here, you can see that plate move to the right. And also, if you're standing on at on this area of the other plate, you can see that this plate moved to the right uh, relative to where you're standing. So you can see that that's why it's called a right slip lateral fault. And on the other hand, a light uh, left lateral strike slip fault would be basically um, the exact opposite. Um, it's uh. It'll be well, you pick any point where you're standing on any of the fault. Uh, I mean, uh, you pick any point where you're standing on either block, and you can see that the other block compared to where you're standing has moved to the left. And um, so these are three key geology terms that may be difficult to understand at first, or maybe hard to visualize. Uh, but and these really are hard to envision. Um, but once you get a pretty good once you start reading the reading the, the definitions and uh, looking at images and trying to understand them it you would eventually um, understand them and uh, they they're not as bad as um, you may think they are and I hope this uh, has helped you uh, understand and learn uh, different types of faults